Kenneth Walsh from Callum Moore is coming in his place. How are the lads, man? They're in great form. Now, you uh, came up by train this morning, a breaking tradition. How was that for you? Well, all the fellas were very relaxed this morning and all got a good night's sleep in their own bed and we can't have any excuses today. Oh, you know, all, all well and we're all looking forward to the challenge very much, Jim. What do you think of the atmosphere here today? Oh, fantastic, obviously, and uh, it'll be great to see so many Wexford people here and uh, I hope it's a good game and we'll give a good account of ourselves. We're determined to and I can assure you that. And the mood with the boys? The mood with the boys is very good. We're stilly determined and ambitious and want to go do a good job. Well, now I have to say, I hope that you heard of all, all of that, because I certainly didn't, because the noise level here in Croke Park, and certainly down where we are around the Nally Stand area at the moment, is quite incredible. Obviously, great excitement amongst the Wexford supporters as their team are here in Croke Park for this All-Ireland semi-final. We still have Michael Dyken with us here in our presentation panel. We're also joined now by Gerlof Mann, who was commenter on that first match. Michael, this is a feeling that Offaly would have known, like in the past themselves, this first visit to Croke Park for an All-Ireland semi-final. Yeah, it's a huge occasion for Wexford, um, None of their players would have been here before in that semi final day, so it's a huge, huge um, match for them today. I think, though, that they're ready for it. They were, they were very impressive in the Leinster final, and um, they're here today. They're used to Pro Park, they play here a lot, and the expectations are often a bit now, having won the Leinster Championship. So I think that um, they, they, they won't feel any added pressure today. And Sherlock Nan, obviously, this is an occasion that you too uh, will identify with because 12 months ago it was you against Galway in similar circumstances. Yeah, it's very, very similar. And the atmosphere is very similar as well. Fantastic atmosphere and great colour here today. It's a marvellous occasion. And I just hope that it doesn't get to Wexford. That's the biggest danger for Wexford. Galway are very, very used to this atmosphere. This is the first day that there's real pressure on Wexford. And let's hope they can produce a display like they produced in the Leinster final. I asked to Liam Griffin during the week when I was talking to him if they could reproduce that kind of match and he said, listen, there's no ifs about it. He says, we're a different team now, you're seeing us in a different light. Yeah, you still never know until the day comes. You still never know until five or ten minutes into the game how the players will react to it. You can be very confident about it. You can have all plans made to ensure that it won't happen, but you don't know until actually the day comes. It's like lining up for a big race in the Olympics. You don't know until you actually come to the line and then we'll know how they're going. After ten minutes, we know how, how we are going. Well, Jerry, from the past week that we've seen, we know all about those kind of situations. We take another break as the toss is being made down on the pitch. We'll be back with this match very shortly. While the attack is led by Joe Cooney, playing alongside the impressive Kevin Broderick and Francis Ford. And just to check through the subs, and uh, you have been told about the sub goalkeeper that's kenneth walsh there but they've got players like paulie kelly or paul cooney or perhaps ollie fahey to bring in in a moment of crisis managed of course by matt murphy so matt murphy there alongside the other selectors who are michael fogarty and jonathan clunan fortunate position of being able to name the same 15 that had that stunning Leinster final win over Offaly. Larry O'Gorman remaining in midfield as ally to Adrian Fender. But just looking around the field right now, a number of positional switches, such as Sean Flood going to cornerback, John O'Connor going to wingback, and the two corner forwards, Eamon Scallon and Tom Dempsey, have switched wings. And a check on the Wexford subs this afternoon, including George O'Connor, including Billy Byrne. A referee has got the match underway. That's Joe O'Leary from Cork. And straight away, Galway into the attack. And their very first wide coming from Liam Burke. Former under-21 captain, of course. Big strapping fellow. 
And that's a quick look back again at the Wexford substitutes this afternoon. They've done all the hard training as well. They include Dave Guiney, who was, of course, Rod Guiney's twin brother. Huge one down the field, helped by the wind, no doubt. Martin Storey, Wexford's captain, looking to give them the early lead, and he's put it over the bar. Storey from Ulaf Badala. Looking for a replacement, stick straight away, but to most, that's a dream start for them, straight away into the lead. Yes, Ger, and it could have been exactly the same at the, the other end. Dan Brock had a great chance for Galway, didn't take it, and the ball goes on the field, and Martin Storey gets Wexford off to a great start. And Liam Burke, I've noticed, has come across to this near side of the field. That's put back there by Liam Dunn. Caught here, impressively so, by Tom Hellebert. Into the centre of the field it goes. Brendan Kyo, low inside, into the inside forward line. Sean Flood across there, forget the number seven on the back. Keeping it well away there from Joe Cooney. Sideline ball. So Wexford making a number of switches and significantly there in the full back line. Sean Flood has gone across to play right corner back and uh, John O'Connor has gone to right wing back. Liam Griffin, the man who has helped them to make it all possible to realise their dreams of taking a first Leinster in 19 years. Some hard work there in the half-back line. Brendan Kyo out as far as Michael Coleman. He's the Galway captain. That's Rob Guiney. Back downfield towards Eamon Scallon. Out again, however, by Tom Hellebert. Into the middle of the field. The settling down process in this match. Joe Rabbit fouled. 65 metres out from the Wexford goal. I'm sure, and I'm sure Galway are going to expect a big game from Joe Rabbit today. He was probably very disappointed after last year's performance, and I'm sure he's keen to avenge that defeat last year. I think he was absolutely devastated to Moscow, quite honestly. So here's a chance. Brendan Kyo taking it, and again knocking it to the left. And a couple of wides now for Galway. Matt Murphy has a quick look at the watch. Just about uh, two and a half minutes gone. Damien Fitzhenry poised to take the puck out here. Again, plenty of length in it. Wind behind him. Into the half-forward line. Runs on towards Eamon Scallon. Looking for another score. Defender just got a tip on his stick as he was hitting that one in. Player who really came to prominence about three years ago when Wexford reached the National League final. Had three compelling matches against Cork so Morgan Darcy pucking this one out it reaches the 45 meter line Sean Flood back in there challenged by Kevin Broderick well away by John O'Connor Connor O'Donovan under the dropping ball towards Michael Coleman runs on towards Liam Burke instead Rob Guiney having to go back and defend here an angle cross over towards Kevin Broderick. Broderick getting inside Sean Flood. Referee says play on. Angle getting acute. Players calling for it. Oh, that's come way back. Adrian Fennell. From a position where Galway were challenging. It's now the turn of Wexford to apply some pressure. Gary Laffin in there. That's the new fullback there, Brian Feeney. Only made his senior championship debut a fortnight ago against New York and the lines went over there signaling that the ball had gone out over the sideline Tom Dempsey not too pleased Tom being marked this afternoon by Jerry McInerney this is the replay again here ah yes yes sir I think his foot went over the line with the, with the ball in his hand and I had free to Galway or sideline ball to Galway so to be taken by this most colourful of players. Former halfback now settling in at cornerback. Larry O'Gorman. Nice ball down. Taken well away here by Rory McCarthy. McCarthy still going forward, still pursued by Nigel Shocknessy. Conor O'Donovan back, trying to make the clearance. Picked up here by Tom Dempsey. Not a fair shoulder to shoulder challenge. And on the 20 metre line, it's going to be a free in for Wexford. Joe O'Leary, who's a school teacher in Cork from the Napiershik Club. 
It's the challenge again here. Yeah, challenge again. I think a push on the back. I suppose Wexford are constantly looking to get a free there. Eamon Scallon is taking it. He doesn't care. He puts it over the bar. His first point of the match. Stretching the Wexford lead. This afternoon, really, the crowd, the colour that you look around Croke Park, it's all about Wexford, it's all about Limerick as well. They brought the huge throngs from those two counties. And the Limerick followers now staying on to see what the opposition, opposition will be like in a few weeks' time. Joe Cooney wasn't able to take it up onto the stick. Larry O'Gorman had no such trouble. Down it goes, in towards Gary Laffin. Laffin against Brian Feeney. Good play by the new full-back. Brendan Kyo wins it. Challenged by Rory McCarthy. Back it comes towards Hall Donahue. Nice play here. Francis Ford got a fine goal against Clare in last year's semi-final. The angle shot, but he's put it over the bar. Goal is first point. Registered by Francis Ford. And it's two points to one. Yes, great score by Francis Ford there, and I'm sure that's the type of possession he's going to like all day. Get the ball in low to him, and he can take on his marker from there. And again, left hand over the bar, great strike. Back live, Nigel Sharpness, he's been called on to defend at centre-half back, missing the boot. Still has the ball, however, pulled and dragged a bit there by Gary Lapham. And Brian Feeney says, just give me the slitter. So some running repairs for the number six. Rumour had it that uh, he might not have made this game because of injury about a fortnight back, but thankfully those rumours have been unfounded. So it's Morgan Darcy who's come from his goal, playing in his third championship match. Big free. Nicely taken down by Kevin Broderick. Dropped it but recovered into the centre, towards Cahill Moore. And he's put it over the bar. Moore by name and by nature. His first score, and it's all tied up at two points apiece. It was Kevin Broderick who was starting that, with a good little pass inside to Cahill Moore. So now Galway have made a full recovery, and they conceded the opening two points. Larry Murphy, haven't seen anything of Larry so far. That's Conor O'Donovan. Jerkosh struggling to contain it. Out towards Joe Rabbit. 50-50 ball here. Rob Guiney going in to challenge Joe Rabbit back there as well. Guiney turning on his right-hand side. Towards Larry O'Gorman. Rory McCarthy in there as well to challenge Brendan Kyo. Comes to Michal Donahue, tidy hurler. Diagonally across towards Kevin Broderick. Sean Flood back there, tenaciously taking it up, beating two men to it. Son of Tim from some great Wexford teams of the 1950s. Nice ball down towards Martin Storey. Prodded on there by Eamon Scallon. Comes towards Larry Murphy. Here's a chance, and Larry drills it over the bar. And Wexford are in front again. The club old man's first point. He makes it three points to two. And all of that following some tenacious corner back play there by Sean Flood. Prodded on there by yes, sir, Eamon Scallon. Yes, sir, you can see Larry Murphy again. But a great play again by Martin Storey to get to keep the ball on the ground. And I'm sure if he does that today and gets plenty of possession into the inside forwards, that Wexford could be on a winner. Cross by Kevin Broderick towards Francis Ford. In a matchup over there this afternoon with Colm Kio. And pass towards Rod Guiney. Had a wonderful Leinster final against Offaly. But then there were so many successes on this Wexford team that afternoon. Adrian Fenlon was one of them. Nigel Shockness is trying to get close to him. Doesn't succeed this time. Tom Hellebert has it. Might have taken a step or two, but he was being fouled by Eamon Scallon. Free to Galway. George O'Connor there, one of the subs who'd love to come in and contribute. So 
the lock ray center half back taking this one huge one Robertson after it causing a concern or two and back there is Colombione kicks it away from goal oh there was a real moment of danger Yes, Jerry. I mean, that was a great play by Galway there. You can see when the free was being taken, Joe, Joe Cooney runs out of the square and lets Joe Rabbit go into the square. I'm sure he's going to do that for all the high frees today. Causing concerns to Damien Fitzhenry in particular. Michael Coleman towards Kevin Broderick. Looking to turn to strike this one. Partial block. That was enough. Third wide for Galway. One for Wexford so far. Pictures of the two managers there in the last couple of shots. Really is a tense and anxious occasion. You're at the semi-final stage. And the door is beckoning towards an All-Ireland entry. Great catch there by Martin Storey again. The referee has whistled. Storey had possession, but it's going to be a free in. And here's a chance to put two points between them. Larry O'Gorman there having a word with Martin Storey. Wonderful catch there, and he's causing problems for the centre-half back, Nigel Shocknessy. Oh, dear. That was a glorious chance. Plucked, however, by Eamon Scallon. So one from two so far for the free-taker. Sure, we've seen that in the first game again. Gary Kirby failing to rise the ball, and again, you see Eamon Scallon doing it. Disappointment for Wexford should have been the score. Down through the centre it comes. Well judged. Mario Gorman. Out there as far as Adrian Fanlon. Brian Feeney. Mario Gorman trying to nip in there and dispossess the Galway man. Comes instead to Tom Dempsey from a huge distance out. From 55 metres out. Great point indeed by Tom Dempsey from Buffers Alley. And Wexford lead by four points to two. Here we see it again. It was a great score by Tom Dempsey, but uh, it, it seems to be Wexford are reacting to the, the breaking ball a lot quicker and getting the hurlies in there and getting the bodies in there. And when the ball broke, Tom Dempsey made no mistake from straight over the bar. They've made the better start than in this match. Oh, Guy, you could only touch that one down. Brendan Kill coming in on it. Good play here by Liam Dunn. And he get forcefully away towards Larry O'Gorman. Settling down nicely at midfield. Pursued by Michael Coleman. Dispossessed well by Nigel Shocknessy. Comes to Coleman again. Huge win over the head of Jer Kosh. Kosh having to respond here. Joe Cooney coming in after him. Then Sean Flood. Oh, it wasn't cleared at all. But thankfully, from a Wexford point of view, John O'Connor had a cool head. Enough time to drive it away from the danger zone. It'll be a sideline ball to Galway. A couple of moments there of concern in that Wexford full-back line, and we've only played yes. something like 40 yes, minutes. Yes, sure, the high ball seems to be causing trouble in behind the full-back line, and again, a bit of panic on Sean Flood's behalf there, and he pulled the ball out, plenty of time to clear his lines, and failed to, to clear it properly. So Brendan Kyo, poised and ready to take the sideline cut. Neatly in towards Joe Rabbit, runs beyond him, and Kevin Broderick has to scamper after it there with John O'Connor. First touch just leaving him down. Younger of the two O'Connor brothers. So a sideline cut for Galway, practically at the end line. Michael Goldman, who made his championship debut in 1988, which of course was the year that Galway completed a two in a row. It's about the best he can hope to do with that. But it comes to Larry O'Gorman. Way down into the inside forward line. Tom Dempsey trying to boot it out towards Eamon Scallon. Looking for some room to swing the stick in. And to put it just to the right, however. And wide of the target. But how quickly nowadays Wexford just drive that ball downfield. There's no shilly-shallying. They're a much more direct team, I think, under Liam Griffin. Yes, Jerry, you're right there. It was great clearance by Larry O'Gorman. But again, it's, it's, it's Wexford reacting again to the breaking ball. Tom Dempsey had lost his stick, but Conor Farrell comes in and picks it up and lo I'm looking out to get a score. Rabbit bounces off him. Oof. Adrian Fenlon just a little bit misfortunate.
Michael Coleman towards Joe Rabbit, whipped away by Liam Dunn. Galway players racing after it. It's three to one in favour of Galway to get this. And it comes to Rory McCarthy instead. Into the corner. Brian Feeney coming across from full back here. Onto his left hand side. Gary Lappin hasn't had a chance so far. Now Nigel Shocknessy turned into an unfair challenge, the referee decides. Indicting Martin Storey. So Galway's free. Playing into the wind in the first half. Towards Cahill Moore, bounces away off the stick of Liam Dunn to Rory McCarthy. Low along inside towards Tom Dempsey. Getting there ahead of Jerry McInerney. Good play inside towards Evan Scallon. Again, some fine play here by Tom Hellebert. Very steady in a short corner back play. Out it comes only as far as Larry O'Gorman. The hand pass outside to Martin Storey. Two seasoned campaigners linking up together. And Storey puts it over the bar. His second point. And all of that is a result of a very good pass from Larry O'Gorman. And it's five points to two in Wexford's favour. Yes, again, you can see Larry O'Gorman again coming forward. Man in his back and sees Martin Storey outside. And Martin with ease just turns and hits it straight over the bar. Great score again for Wexford. Joe Rabbit inside towards Joe Cooney. Looking for decent service against Chair Kush. Can cause problems. Out to Brendan Kyo. They look for a point here. Yes. They were over-elaborating a few times in earlier attacks. But simplicity paying off there, and it's five points to three. Yeah, we can see it again here. A great play again by Brendan Kyo. But um, you must give credit there to Joe Cooney. And I think if Galway can get the ball direct into Joe Cooney, low as, as it was there, I'm sure he's going to cause endless trouble for Joe Cush. Martin Storey rising up for it, cleverly flicking it towards himself, chasing it after it. It's Michal Donoghue who's there first. Donoghue from Clarenbridge, a family steeped in hurling lore. Well, the point was made in the discussion before this match. You'd know after 10 minutes how Wexford was shaping up. Well, what's the verdict? Yes, they seem to, they're shaping up well, Jerry, you know. Um I, I think it's it's a tame enough start. I think we were expecting a lot of sparks to be flying between Galway and Wexford in the All-Ireland semi-final. I think it started very tame at this stage. And uh, hopefully this will continue. Maybe the game will open up a bit more and the, the tension will be relieved a little bit now at this stage and uh, people will be able to get down and play a good, a good round of hurling. That's gone all the way and it's gone off a stick for a 65. Martin Storey claiming it. The first 65 of the match. And Marty Morrissey is our sideline reporter this afternoon. Marty, have you got something for us? Indeed, Ger, it does. Uh, looks like that uh, Billy Byrne and Paul Finn are warming up along the sideline, but uh, Paul Finn could well be the man that's going to be introduced at a change. In fact, Paul Finn has been given a slip of paper and a change is being made in Wexford. So, change about to happen. Thank you, Marty. Liam Brifflin strikes me as the kind of manager if things are not going right, he'll try and sort it out straight away, and this time, that's gone over the bar. John O'Connor coming up from defence. It's six points to three. So the change then about to be made, and Eamon Scallon has been replaced. As I said, Ger, Liam Griffin has been very quick to make his mark here. Eamon Scanlon had been troubled by Tom Heller for player cornerback, and there's been a direct swap straight away. Liam Dunn under the dropping ball, did well to clear it towards Rory McCarthy. Didn't get much of a connection on it. Comes back towards Nigel Shockness, he sent her half back. Michal Donoghue. Rod Guiney. It's a very scrappy start to this match, only 20 minutes gone. Tom Dempsey in towards Gary Lapham, being very well policed by Brian Feeney. Jerkosh, meanwhile, over there, appeals that uh, Joe Cooney was dragged down, it seemed. There is the uh, substitution, then Paul Field on, and Eamon Scallon off. Sideline ball to be taken by Liam Burke, so the manager making the first of his changes. 
Liam Burke didn't get a very good connection. Stop. Not very convincingly by Rod Guiney. Out it comes again to Joe Cooney. The angle shot inside, controlled very well there by Colm Kyo from Bonclody. That's Larry O'Gorman. Rory McCarthy adding to it towards Martin Storey. And Jerry McInerney trying to come out. He'd love to be out around the half-back line and all getting more into this match. That's Liam Burke. Sean Flood. Good clearance. But just too much for the inside forwards to have any chance on it. One big noticeable battle that's going on there, Jerry, is between Martin Story and Nigel Shockensee, centre feet or centre forward and centre back. Um, great play of hard hurling there between Martin Story and Nigel Shockensee. Yeah, they've each had their moments so far. Cahill Moore trying to advance inside Liam Dunn. He's got a few yards now in which to be creative here. And it's buried by Joe Cooney. Give him half a chance. And he'll destroy defences. Sides are level, 1-3 to 6 points. Twenty-one minutes were gone when that reached the back of the net. Some very forceful play here. Yes, you can see here as Kyle Moore picks up the ball. Comes inside, right? Maybe has a look to take his point and sees his normal side. Went for goal. Wasn't intended as a pass, I don't think. And the ball scrummed off his hardly across the square to Joe Cooney and he buried it. I even thought he took a few steps too many, Cahill Moore, when he was going over there, but the referee said play on. And the goal stands. So Galway got the first goal of this match. Perhaps now it'll pick up a notch or two. Needs to do so. Kevin Broderick for Joe Cooney. He'll be rampant now after that. Towards Francis Ford. Some very clever forwards in that Galway attack. Free in for Galway. So Francis to take it himself. Former star minor and part of a terrific under-21 team a few years ago that won the All-Ireland. Picture of concentration. Light breeze into his face. Making little of it. Tapping it over the bar. So Galway take the lead in this match. This is the goal again a few seconds ago. Joe outside the small yes. rectangle. No question of him being in the square. He's definitely outside the square. So Galway now conceding the free to Wexford. Tom Dempsey coming out like he's going to take it. And Martin Storey certainly has an injury. A hand injury. Delighted to be the team captain this year when they took the Leinster title for the first time in 19 years. Helped Ola the Barla, of course, to uh, win the last two Wexford titles. So going in there to attend to him is Dr. Stephen Bow. And one of those people watching this in the Blackrock Clinic is former, former Wexford goalkeeper Pat Nolan. Making a nice recovery. And I know he's watching this match this afternoon in the company of his wife, Lily. We wish him well. I know that Jimmy Doyle was also wishing him the very best as uh, Wexford wished themselves the very best through Tom Dempsey's free-taking, and he's put that over the bar. So sides level once again. Morgan Darcy's puck out. Joe Rabbit in there. Came off Joe. It'll be Wexford sideline cut. Liam Griffith in there to attend straight away to the injured player who may be John O'Connor. Let's see what happened here. Oh, he got an elbow. Quite accidentally. Quite accidentally, just Jerry. He got an elbow in the face, gone up the high ball there. Well, Wexford have already used up one of their subs, of course, when they took off Eamon Scallon and brought on Paul Finn. Again, Stephen Bowl, the doctor, is in there to attend. And Marty, you have some further news for us? Yes, just some news, Jerry. Uh, it seems that George O'Connor could well be the man that's going in now. He's just put on his helmet and doing a few warm-up exercises here along the sideline. Well, it does make a lot of sense once the player goes down injured that uh, you prepare 
the possible subs straight away. So it may be that George will have to come in to replace his brother John. Although John is a very, very strong character. And if he can play on at all, you can be certain that he will. I think Jerry looks to be okay. He's getting up off the ground now. And um, I'm sure he won't want to go off the field at this stage. Had a bad spell through injury earlier on in the season. It really is a very warm afternoon here, so the players very wisely taking some water on board when there are these uh, breaks in play. He looks very groggy, very shaken. Oh, he's very shaken. I'm not sure he knows where he is at this stage. Probably mild concussion. So John O'Connor certainly needs a rest over there. And his brother George about to come on. He hasn't come on just yet. Still over by the far sideline. But it was a nasty elbow, but quite accidentally hit, I know. They're still just waiting to see whether or not they're going to bring George on. Yes, sir. I think they're waiting another two or three minutes to see will he recover. But now here's, I think. Well, George is on, but he hasn't given the slip of paper to the referee just yet. So technically, he's not in the match. Wexford down to 14 players. Edwin Fennon fails to cut it out. Michael Coleman to apply some pressure in there. Wexford defence down a man. Colum Keogh. And fairly stopped by Joe Rabbit. So it'll be a free to the Slaney Siders, who of course over the years have also been known as the Yellow Bellies. This is Keogh again, very tidy player, just held back there by Rabbit. Free to be taken by Liam Dunn. They still have not brought on George O'Connor. Here they come into the attack. Oh, he's a chance! It's a great goal by Rory McCarthy! Rory McCarthy! A wonderful goal! So six minutes after Joe Cooney got Galway's goal, there's the reply by the 14 men. Down by virtue of the injury to John O'Connor, and without the sub having been brought on just yet. Yes, sir, we can see the goal here. A great score by Rory McCarthy. How many times have we seen that in the past? Guy picking up the ball on the run, without taking it into his hand, and burying it into the back of the net. Great goal for Wexford. Yeah, wonderful skill. George O'Connor has now come into the match in place of his brother John and seems to be coming in in the half-back line. So the throw ball involving George O'Connor and Joe Rabbit. Two big, strong, strapping fellows. They'll have quite a contest, you can be sure of that. Michael Coleman onto the right-hand side. Lobbed in, but again going to the left. Five wides now for Galway, three for Wexford. Always shows great intensity in his play. Really trying to drive on his team. Damien Fitzhenry with the puck out. It's Robert Wexford ahead by three points. George O'Connor wisely leaving this one over the sideline. And Joe Rabbit has gone down. Yes, Jerry seems as he went over on his ankle there, near the sideline. Must take off his boot, it could be in right trouble. That particular part of the ground just down there where Joe is right now has suffered as a result of the rain last Sunday and, of course, the celebrations of the Mead football fans out there. So it's not in the best of Nick. Uh, turned on the ankle. But now it's the turn of Galway to be down to 14 players. Michal McGloin coming in there to attend to him. Liam Dunn and Adrian Fenlon taking it again. Oh, nice pick up by McCarthy. He completely sends his man the wrong way. That's a terrific piece of skill. So a goal and a point. Last couple of scores for Wexford, scored by the St. Martins player. It's 1-8 to 1-4. Well, they've made a terrific recovery from that goal by Galway after 21 minutes. They come storming back. Great pick up again by Roy McCarthy and again. We had to finish it then after doing something like that, and a great score with his left hand over the bar. Brendan Kyo trying to respond for Galway. 
Good block down. It was Rory McCarthy was back there doing his defending. From limited opportunities, he's certainly shone in this game. Taken here by Cahill Moore. And it's gone over the bar. Second point for the Turlock Moore player. So Damien Fitzhenry poised to take the puck out here. Great catch by Michal Donahue this time. And Jerry McInerney coming to assist him. Cahill Moore beaten by Liam Dunn. Breaks back into the centre again. Liam Burke now advancing with purpose. Three against him. Referee says, on you go. Stymied somewhat, however. Joe Cooney next, and Joe takes too many steps. Three out to Wexford. That's uh, Dave Guiney there. Identical twin brother of Rod. Joe Cooney, who's done so much for goal we're hurling over the years, did so well in the last ten minutes of the league final against Tipperary as well, of course. A huge one. Blocked out as far as Martin Storey. Typical Martin Storey, but this time untypically outside the right-hand post. It's interesting to look out there. You see Liam Buck operating around the middle of the field now. Um, I think their intent may be having five forwards, four, five, four or five forwards in the half in that forward line at this stage. And Rod Guiney doing the marking on Liam Burke. Meanwhile, it's Sean Flood. George O'Connor coming to assist him. Ball spills from his grasp. Out to Kevin Broderick, 45 metres out. Good block down by George O'Connor, but Galway still have it. And here's Cahill Moore, and they have a man over here. Francis Ford, and stopped on the line, but it's belted in. Cahill Moore, 2-5 to 1-8. Level once again. So a second Galway goal came We're in this fashion it here. Again. And that's again a great piece of skill by Joe Cooney. Flicks the ball up, hand passes it out to Cal Moore, and again he into the corner forward. Great save by the goalkeeper, where it was Cal Moore to finish at the back of the net. Great goal for Galway. So Galway then, with two goals in the first half. And the match all tied up effectively, it's 11 points apiece. The scene on that Galway subs bench. You think that Galway's last really hard match was the league final back in May. Whereas Wexford had the benefit of a championship at Leinster, and that's tapped and saved by Fitzhenry, but he doesn't quite know where that was going to end up. Out as far as Jerkosh to Liam Dunn. Here's Adrian Fenlon. Support to his right if he needs it. Using the more direct style. Over the head of Larry Murphy. Tom Hellebert again comes from cornerback. He certainly has dominated the two men who've been on him so far this afternoon. Mikey Coleman. Liam Burke now. Coleman's shot. And trickling harmlessly wide. Six wides for Galway during the first half. Four for Wexford. So we have some news of uh, John O'Connor's injury for Marty, I think. Yes, Ger, I just checked in the dressing room. John O'Connor is still getting attention. He's suffering from a bad concussion, but they're not sending him to hospital. They feel that a little bit of time, uh, he'll be fine. And uh, when I went into the dressing room, he recognized me anyway, so he must be OK. So Wexford continue to press here. Tom Dempsey grounded by Jerry McInerney. Quizzical expression on his face, but it's going to be a free in. And Tom most likely the one who will take it. So from this free here, can Wexford take the lead once again? It's gone over. Tom Dempsey's third point. One from play, two from freeze. And Wexford have a one-point lead. 
So winter time added on for injuries and the doctors were on a couple of times during the first half. Morgan Darcy from Moy Cullen in Galway pucking out. Adrian Fenland over there with George O'Connor under the dropping ball. Joe Rabbit trying to pick it up. Struggling to make some headway in there and the referee I think opting to throw the ball in between two players. And that's on the 45 metre line. Adrian Fenland may have taken a knock. Mr. I'm sure Joe Rabble can't wait to get into dressing at this stage. He's, he's struggling badly with an ankle injury. Well, we saw him off a little while ago. He is struggling, as you say. There is where the problem is, down in the ankle. So will he be coming out for the second half? I'm sure Carl will be happy to be in this position. There is a little bit of a breeze in favour of Wexford in the first half, and I'm sure they'll be happy to go in. So Francis Ford has come out to take this free. Just about a yard inside the 45 metre line. Curling and off the post and outside and wide. Not too much in that. And that the final piece of action in the first half. We had three goals in that first half. The first was by Joe Cooney and the second a blistering goal by Rory McCarthy after 27 minutes and then two minutes before the end of regulation time Cahill Moore got a second for Galway half time score then it's Wexford 1-9 Galway 2-5 and Marty is with somebody going off the field right now to talk to us thank, thank you very much uh, Charlotte Clune and Galway selectors with me Char Charlotte your thoughts at half time uh, it was a very tight game uh, we started fairly poorly but we've come into the game in the last quarter um, a fairly lively game. It'll be up to the team in the second half that has the greater hunger for the for victory, and uh, I think we have that. Your second goal obviously brought you right back into it. It did, yes, it did. Uh, it was a very important score for us. It kept us in the game. Do you still think at half time that you can win this All Ireland semi final? I think so. Yeah, we're confident. Yes. John Clunan, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, well, Wexford flying it in that first half, playing with great, great determination. But Galway, those two goals have kept them in the match. We'll pick up the story of this after the commercial break. Captain and his fellow selectors were happy indeed with their first half performance. I think they couldn't be but happy. The two goals that Galway got were a little bit on the lucky side. We hooked one, one blocked another, and they got rebounds. So we're, we're quite happy in that, in that, that we're, we're well able to take these guys in the second half. It'll be the survival of the fittest out there in the second half. Any changes, any switches? No switches except that George has gone to midfield, Larry has gone back to the wing back. And that's the only switch we have. Mick Kinsella, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And the second half gets underway. Nigel Shocknessy straight away then. Survival of the fittest. Let's see what happens. It's going to be intriguing. Good play in there by Galway's Brian Feeney. Got there ahead of Gary Laffin. Taking the free himself. The breeze now behind Galway in this second half. A match which has been played in front of an attendance of 61,937. Watching Tom Dempsey's shot end up going over the bar. And that's a great start to the second half for Tom and for Wexford. That's four points he's now scored. And it's 110 to 25. That's a great start to the second half for Wexford Joe, but I mean, it was a result of a very poor free by Galway there. I mean, they had plenty of time to clear with a free down the field and hit it short. Lovely, pleasant, balmy afternoon here. As we watch Liam Burke restrained unfairly. And that's going to be a free in for Galway. And Francis Ford will come to take it. Francis concentrating on the target. The great big screen just up on Hill 16 has his image in it. Must be a strange experience if he looks up there at all. He may just have looked up because he's put it wide. Ordinarily you would have put the uh, week's housekeeping money I think on Francis Ford to have tapped that one over. And again, Jerwick, or Galway started again with five forwards. Again, Liam Brock has gone right out to the middle of the field, trying to win the breaking ball from the puck outs and leave plenty of space in their forward line. Well, it's a tactic they have used in the past. They won a memorable semi-final in 1986 with that particular tactic, but it didn't work out in the final. Michael Colvin leaving it there for Nigel Shocknessy perhaps to hit.
in towards Joe Cooney. Runs on beyond him towards Francis Ford. Trying to make a better angle for himself. Colum Kyo trying to close him down. And clearly he got a touch on it. Initially, the umpire put his hand up to say that's a 65, but it was Joe O'Leary, the referee, who said, forget it, wave it wide. The referee has the right to overrule his umpires. That's in the rule book. To me, Gerard, that was a 65. Um, I think the Wexford, the, the Wexford defender definitely got his hurry to the ball. And oh, certainly seemed to do so. Yes. This was it again. Francis turning on his left-hand side. Ah, yeah, there was a connection, no doubt about it. Should have been a 65. This is Nigel Shocknessy emerging from centre-half back. Martin Storey chasing after him. And towards Joe Rabbit. And surely Goal will be saying, well, we'll give him five, ten minutes to see whether or not he can shake off the effects of the injury. Larry O'Gorman fouls the ball, and it's going to be a free for Galway. This was the incident again here with Larry O'Gorman picking it yes, up. Picking it up off the ground. No doubt about it. Brendan Kyo from Athen Rye to take this free. Remember Wexford ahead by two points. And that sweeps away to the left-hand side. The cheers are Wexford cheers. There's three scoring chances Galway had now from freeze, the one before half-time and two just after half-time, and they might rule those misses, misses by the end. Matt Murphy there, the Galway manager just behind the Wexford goal, moving across indeed to advise his forwards, I think. Over it goes. Well, knocked out by Tom Hellebert initially. Beyond Kevin Broderick. Two Wexford players there. Liam Dunn. Clever play. Just about getting it as far as Rod Guiney. Nurse back towards Larry O'Gorman, but instead it's picked up by Kevin Broderick. Into the corner. And the evergreen Joe Cooney going after it. Against Jer Kush. And he's put it to the right. Another chance. 11 wides in all so far. Wexford just four. None in the second half to date. So Liam Griffin continues to try and master mind away into the All-Ireland final for his team. Damien Fitzhenry's puck out. Drop down towards George O'Connor. Larry O'Gorman. Picked up by Tom Dempsey. Partial blocking it from Michal Donoghue. Rory McCarthy nips in then. Brian Feeney back there, the new Galway fullback. Beating the attempted block by Martin Storey. Whipped on by Larry O'Gorman to Tom Dempsey, 45 metres out. And he gives it away to Michal Donoghue. Anxious and nervous in these opening minutes. Sean Flood called on to make the intervention over there. Cahill Moore battling so too, Rod Guiney. Forward it goes there from Larry Murphy. Gary Laffin now has had precious few opportunities. The hand pass back into space, and that was enough for Galway to get men in there. Brian Feeney. Referee says play on. You have the advantage. Conor O'Donovan. Forward by Cahill Moore. And again, it's Damien Fitzhenry called on to make the save. And the clearance under pressure. Cahill Moore under it there with Brendan Kyo. This is Liam Dunn. Nippy player. Taking it forward himself. Good burst forward this by Liam Dunn. Can they finish with a scoring opportunity? In towards Martin Storey. Storey's snapshot is high. And it's gone just to the right. Not too much in that at all. So, Wexford with just one point for the second half so far. Galway yet to score. Yes, Jerry, great bit of skill here by Liam Dunn. As he goes on, flicks the ball out. Again, over Jerry McInerney's head. And unfortunately, it wasn't the score at the end of it. Here they come with Francis Ford of Galway. And he doesn't threaten goalkeeper Damien Fitzhenry with that particular shot. So it's a very sluggish start to the second half, and um, 
you're going to need a player now of the calibre of Martin Story or Joe Coney's to get the, take the game by the, the scruff of the neck and try and win it for his team and uh, try and bring his other teammates in, in, into this game. It's there for the taking for either team. Larry O'Gorman now is right half back on Liam Burke, but effectively following him into midfield whenever necessary. And uh, George O'Connor is also in midfield for Wexford. Meanwhile, it's Colum Kyo there. As Gaul will withdraw an awful lot of players and leave a whole lot of space in front of the Wexford goal to be utilised by their skillful forwards. Meanwhile, that's the turn of the skillful Wexford forwards to be in there challenging. Oh, so close. It's gone wide. Gary Lappin was bearing in there. You see Larry Garman coming forward again. I, 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 I'm not sure whether this was a 65 or not sure. You see the high ball coming in. In around the square. And I wonder was the keeper the man that pushed that ball out. Morgan Darcy pucking out. Larry O'Gorman. Back on familiar territory around the half back line. That's Cahill Moore. And at last, they drive one over the bar. So a goal and three points now for the rangy centre-half forward. And he makes it 1-10 to 2-6, just a point in it. So Galway's first point of the second half, taking nearly eight and a half minutes. Liam Griffin advising his goalkeeper, Damien Fitzhenry, where to place this ball. Out to the centre towards the experienced Martin Story. Nigel Shockley, is he chasing after him? It's still Story. We'll have to hit him with the, from the stick. Didn't make a great connection. Out by Jerry McInerney to the far side towards Kevin Broderick. Sean Flood trying to close him down. Aided and abetted there by Adrian Fenlon. Next in is Conor O'Donovan. Runs on beyond Joe Cooney. I think they were expecting one of the forwards to come in on it. Instead, it's Larry O'Gorman with the clearance as far as Mihal Donahue for Galway. Liam Burke chasing after it. Again, some great hurling there by Larry O'Gorman, spooning it forward there towards Rod Guiney. Beyond George O'Connor. Rory McCarthy. Three Wexford players there trying to get it up. Michael Coleman to bring a bit of order to midfield, perhaps. Stop by Liam Dunn. Ball not going any particular distance. Joe Rabbit in beyond the fullback, Jer Kush. And I'm sure the respective managers are probably calling on their team to drive it long. Put the opposition under pressure, not yourselves. This was Jer Kush there. Forced back, defending against uh, two Galway players. Wrestled to the ground, free out. And Marty has some further news for us. Yes, indeed. Uh, here in the Galway dugout, Oli Fahey is warming up along the sideline. Looks like Joe Rabbit uh, will be departing the scene. Galway's full back line under intense pressure again. Out towards Martin Storey. Storey coming forward. Hand passing it in, but the referee's whistle has sounded for that foul on Martin Storey. And it's going to be a free from straight in front of the goal from 20 metres out. Yes, sure. As he got, it went through here. As he's about to strike the ball, I think he took a knock from the defender. Tom Helbert coming out, continues on, and takes Martin Storey out of the game. So running repairs for the Hurley there. I think... Tom Dempsey borrowed Nigel Shocknessy's early just to repair the splicing on it. So Tom Dempsey with four points so far. Just to stretch the lead to two points again. High and into the canal end. So it's Wexford 111, 14 points. Galway 2-6, 12 points. And just approaching 12 minutes gone in the second half. One of the fittest managers in the business, he runs around the park time and again, urging, cajoling, advising. Now watching his side defend here. Martin, or Mackie Coleman rather, nicely down. Liam Burke 
This holds a lot of promise into Joe Cooney. Down it comes. Colum Kiel back there to defend for Wexford. And the referee noting an injury in there. Yes, again, you see Liam Brock going through again. You're really questioning whether he should have maybe taken the, taken the point, but he passes it, hand passes it through to Joe Cooney as he tried to control the ball. The goalkeeper, Damien Fitzhenry, comes out, and Joe Cooney is clobbered. Yeah, he connected definitely with Joe Cooney. This from another angle from inside the goal. This time, watch as uh, Damien Fitzhenry advanced there, and certainly Joe Cooney felt the brunt of that. Michal McGloin, the team doctor, is always in to attend to Joe Cooney. So people use call that pass, the hospital pass, the high ball turn up into the air. And the defender coming out to attack it. Yeah, you have to be very fond of hospital food to go in after that one. It was a high challenge nonetheless, as Damien Fitzhenry came out to uh, defend his goal. This that other yeah. angle again. Again, you see it. Uh, it was a particularly high channel by Damien Fitzhenry, and uh, maybe he's gets away a little bit unlucky uh, some referees maybe would have given a penalty decision for that so Joe battered and bruised retakes his place at full forward he never complains he just gets on with the action and he's been doing that now for over a decade and with the gentleman of hurling Damien Fitzhenry pucks it out Michael Coleman was under it, but didn't make any connection. Larry Murphy, almost dispossessed by his own man, by Adrian Fenlon. And again, the referee sees that the use of an elbow in there, and that's going to be a free down for Galway. It was very loose play by Adrian Fenlon. He had no chance of getting the ball and runs into the man and gives away a stupid free. So Brendan Kyo will take it. So Galway then thinking about that change that we heard a little while ago about Ollie Fahey coming on, Ollie from Gort. Good deep ball in there, that's a penalty, is it? For dragging down. And Galway then have this glorious chance coming up and this is the reason why as that ball was sailing in there and the man was certainly pulled down Joe Rabbit and once again they have this ploy of bringing in Rabbit bringing out Cooney to torment the Wexford defense Joe Cooney is about to take the penalty Galway behind by two points this to give them the lead once again if he goes for a goal what will he do he's gone for it it's gone off the stick of Colin Kerr, it's saved, and Wexford cleared it. Great defensive play. So Joe Cooney went for the goal. There was still a lot of time left. Should he have gone for the point in retrospect? Yes, sure, that's, that's going to be the better question. A great stop by Liam Dunn on the line here. Not alone does he stop it, but he controls it. Gets it into his hand and makes a great clearance out the feed. Yes, it was Liam Dunn who was back there, and not Colum Kyo. It's gone into the left, and again, wasted possession. So many wides, 14 in all for Galway, 7 in the first half, and already 7 in the second half. But this penalty once again, from the other angle, Joe Cooney, all concentration. First of all, Damien Fitzhenry came and made an intervention to stop, and then it was the marvellous Liam Dunn who somehow managed to keep it out and made the clearance. Back live, it's Nigel Shocknessy firing it back down again towards his forwards, who have missed far too many chances. Wexford far more economical. Larry O'Gorman. Beyond Rory McCarthy, in towards Tom Dempsey. Jerry McInerney trying to close him down. Tom holds on to it. Forward, in towards Gary Lappin. Brian Feeney's back there. Goes off his stick. That'll be a Wexford ball. And you wonder, Joe, will that be the changing part of the game? Well, they had an opportunity to put the ball over the bar, bring themselves back into, into the game and only be trailed by a pint. They've been failing to get a few scores in the start of the second half, and maybe a pint should have been taken. So Paul Finn gone in there now to full forward.
This will be taken by Adrian Fenlon from the Rapparees Club. Wexford still leading by two points. And that's gone outside the right-hand post. Their third wide of the second half, seven and all. I think he'll be concerned that players like Adrian Fenelon are not as dominant as they had been in the Leinster final. Rod Guiney coming out after this one, but it's taken by Michael Coleman instead. Driving towards the Wexford goal. They look for another score here. Very promising. Stopped by Damien Fitzhenry. Didn't quite hit it as hard as he could, I think, Michael Coleman, but it's Rory McCarthy with great pace. He's got support outside to Larry Murphy. Now he needs the assistance of Martin Storey. Can Storey drive it over the bar? The answer is yes. Well, it's been something of the difference between the teams. Wexford, fast, attractive play, taking their chances, and now opening up a three-point gap. Galway have been so wasteful. Yes, sure. That was a great counter-attack by Wexford. But, I mean, Michael Corwin uh, tried to walk the ball into the net at that stage. Should have hit the ball over the bar. Down towards Liam Burke, it comes this time. Again, they advance. Going right through the half-back line. And this time, he wisely taps it over the bar. Liam Burke's very first point of the match, putting two between them. This is just Galway's second score in the second half, remember? They've had so many chances. Liam Burke putting it over the bar. It's Henry pucking out. Batted down again by Michael Coleman towards Cahill Moore, who works so hard on the 40. Liam Dunn again. Past Michal Donahue. Jerry McInerney striving to dispossess Tom Dempsey. They all try to pick it up, it's with uh, Martin Storey, going for another one. Lobbed in towards Gary Lappin, held instead there by the cornerback Tom Hellebert. Oh. Finally going over the advancing legs there of George O'Connor, and the referee has the notebook out. So George O'Connor going into the referee's book, this is the challenge again. As Tom Hellebert was advancing, he had beaten just about every one of them, and George said, that's as far as you're going. I'm sure he's been inspiration for Galway today, Tom Hellebert. You know, he's, he's a driving force behind our full-back line, and uh, they haven't given the Wexford forward line to stop in around the goal. He's playing exceptionally well. So Galway, it seems, about to spring Oli Fahey, still not on the field. Brendan Kyo, inside there towards Joe Rabbit surrounded by Wexford players. Here's Larry O'Gorman. So we have some further news from the sideline from Marty. Indeed, just to tell you that as you just spotted a moment ago, Ger Ali Fahey is being introduced and he's a forward. Uh, we don't really know who's coming off. Originally it was going to be Joe Rabbit. And news of John O'Connor, he has been removed to Matter Hospital. It's just a precautionary measure. He is fine. Thank you, Marty. We send him our very best wishes, of course. So Ali Fahi has come on. And it is indeed Joe Rabbit who's making his way across towards the far sideline. Wasn't able to play a full part in the second half. Liam Burke. Surrounded by two players and he took too many steps. He was well aware that he was about to be hooped there. So confirmation of the substitution. So disappointment once again, Joe Rabbit's lot. I wonder, Joe, will we see Billy Byrne introduced this into this game shortly, Joe? Well, he's always good for a good 20 minutes in the Wexford colours and has been so over the years. They could perhaps do with a fresh driving force in the full forward line. So a place against Limerick at stake. Just about 13 minutes to go now. Jerry McInerney towards Adrian Fenlon. One back there by Liam Dunn, unchallenged. Nicely across towards Gary Lappin. And Lappin can only hold it up and Galway get men in there quickly. 
The foul there on Conor O'Donovan. Free downfield for Galway. Nigel Shocknessy about to take it. In towards Liam Burke. Wexford halfbacks went out to attack that. That's Ali Fahi. First touch in this match. Francis Ford. Looking for the point here. And going away to the left. It's become very frustrating for the Galway forwards and even more so for their fans. But if you're a Wexford fan up there in the stands, you're thinking, hey, just another 12 minutes, and if it stays like this, we're in the All-Ireland Final for the first time since 1977. So once again, some more news from the side. Indeed, it looks there that Billy Byrne is going to be introduced for Wexford, probably at full forward, and also Peter Kelly is warming up for Galway. OK, so two forwards about to come on, it seems, one for either team. George O'Connor realised where Martin Storey was. Poor ball by Storey. Here's Nigel Shocknessy. Keeping it away there from Tom Dempsey. Adrian Fennan about to whip onto it, but in there quickly was Nigel Shocknessy. Michael Coleman now. Shocknessy is still down on the ground. Galway attack. It's lobbed in there by Oli Fahey. One back there by Damien Fitzhenry, supported by Rob Guiney. Forward towards George O'Connor. Pushed in the back by Brendan Kyo. It's a Wexford free. All this while, Nigel Shocknessy is down injured being attended to. Yes, sure, it was a bad belt there, actually. Adrian Fenley was pulling the ball as Nigel Shockley came to it, and uh, I think he's got a very, very bad knock. Nigel was excessively brave going in that time, I thought. He was just full of determination. What championship is really all about. But he certainly came off second best there. I don't think Adrian Fenley realised that Nigel was coming in to challenge him. We may just get a second view of it. Thankfully, he's wearing the face guard and the helmet it could have been an awful awful lot worse I think he's saying I'm all right doctor just making absolutely sure here is it again look you can see it and finally winding up and as he goes in to catch the ball takes the full belt of the Harley oh, thankfully he's okay also thankfully he went in and challenged right face to face as it were because if he stayed back from that That's he really right, would have yeah. got a much worse belt Liam Dunn to take the free 10 minutes to go Brian Feeney really it's a match you feel at this stage still can go either way just two points between the teams Wexford having the lead great catch by Larry O'Gorman towards Martin Storey Out they come for it here, and it's Mihal Donahue trying to pick it off the ground again. Challenged by Larry Murphy, it's one back by George O'Connor. Adrian Fenlon next in there. Drop hit there by Mihal Donahue. In towards Ali Fahi. Jerkosh, the Wexford fullback, to Adrian Fenlon. This time to get much greater distance into it, and there's a problem. challenge for that Billy Byrne inside in that full forward position and Wexford followers feel they're on their way to the All-Ireland final there's still eight and a half minutes to go but it's celebration time for these fans on the terraces in the stands wherever they're watching from the Galway defense was badly caught out here yes we see it again here high ball from Adrian Fell comes into square and what the Wexford forwards hadn't been doing on that was to get in underneath it and get a touch with it. And I'm sure Billy Bourne would take credit for that. So another change that we have noted that Peter Kelly has come in in place of Francis Ford. So Galway now with one last throw of the dice to try and keep themselves in this. All of a sudden they are five points adrift. Here he goes again. again. A little flick from Billy Warren, and that's what he's there for. It's his first touch, and it's in the back of the net. Yeah, Billy Byrne got it. About 27 minutes into the second half, and again, the referee 
just attending to Joe Cooney. I think still suffering from that belt earlier on. And now they're calling for fresh resources. Is he a happy man? Is he what? For Wexford, it's a case of having a wonderful afternoon out. It may be sluggish and intense at times, but it's a case of getting there, getting to the All-Ireland Final. Yes, Gerard, maybe we were expecting too much. It's a place in the All-Ireland Final is at stake, and neither side was going to give way to the hurling skills of either side. The we have very, we've seen very little of the likes of Larry Murphy today, who had an exceptional length of final, and um, hopefully maybe or he's keeping that for the next day if Wexford go through. I'm sure God will have something to say about this before the end is over on you. So Joe Cooney putting the helmet back on again. They've already brought Oli Fahey and Peter Kelly in to join their attack. And Joe ambling back into this match. So Peter Kelly coming to take it. His brother Paul, it continues to be one of the subs. Man of the match of the 93 final, remember. And that's gone to the left and it's gone wide. Just to confirm your worst fears if you're a Galway fan, 16 wides in all, terribly, terribly wasteful. Wexford with just seven. Wexford with a five-point lead. Yes, Ger, and uh, not alone, I've had a problem with possession-wise, hit-wise in their hands. They've also had problems with their free-taking as well. They've missed two or three very, very easy points from freeze. They're under pressure again, the Galway backs. Adrian Fennell on the snapshot. I think he knew where it was ending up because even before it landed, he was heading back towards midfield. Well, for Wexford, it's a case of keeping their shape, keeping their organisation, remaining focused on the challenge which is ahead of them now for the remaining five and a half minutes of this match plus some stoppage time Galway simply have to get the scores quickly otherwise the game is up for them for 1996 Brendan Kyo trying to gain an advantage in there but here's Larry Murphy up it goes towards Paul Finn stopped there by Conor O'Donovan now Billy Byrne having a look around to see where Adrian Fenlon is Lumbering head towards Rory McCarthy. Back there is Tom Hellebert. It's going to be a Wexford ball. The sheer persistence there of Rory McCarthy ensuring that they got something out of that. Discussion time for the selectors. So Wexford now with Adrian Fenlon in no particular hurry to take this sideline cut. Having a five-point lead. Didn't make a good connection. Galway have it back. Michael Coleman. Plenty of height. Kevin Broderick. Well, Galway will now need the kind of recovery that they showed us in the league final in May against Tipperary if they're to drag this one out of the fire. An injured Wexford player on the far side. And it seems to be Sean Flood. So he receives the attention from Stephen Bow. Meanwhile, the Wexford defence with Jer Kosh being asked some searching questions. Liam Burke lobbed across. Rod Guiney can't get to it. But he has a chance. Stopped again by Rod Guiney. Magnificent. And there they are once again in numbers, defending valiantly. Good clearance up as far as Tom Dempsey trying to wrong foot Jerry McInerney who gets the assistance in any case of Conor O'Donovan. Down towards Peter Kelly. 45 metres out. Two Wexford men to challenge him. Well, Wexford's backs are in there tigerishly and tenaciously trying to dispossess every Galway attacker. There's a lack of cohesion among the Galway attack right now. There's a far greater togetherness about Wexford. It's Joe Cooney to take it. And amazingly, he's put it to the left. The huge cheers up on Hill 16 are Wexford cheers. They're cheering every miss at this stage. 
Yes, Joe. Galway are going to kick themselves out for this game. They had plenty of opportunities for the ball over the bar, and uh, they failed to do so. And Joe must be their third or fourth free taker today. Damien Fitzhenry into the half forward line. Up it goes as far as Billy Byrne, having got the goal. He was looking for a point, but fails to take it. And Sean Flood, they've used their subs, and Sean Flood has gone into left corner forward. He's limping very badly, but it's a case of having to keep him in there with only two minutes to go. The defence will be marginally weakened by that, of course. George O'Connor loses out. Brendan Kyo lobbing it in there towards Peter Kelly. Some very good play. Colm Kyo out to Rod Guiney. Oof. Picking it up the second time. Much better clearance. Out to the centre of the field. Batted down by Brendan Kyo. Taken by Adrian Fenland for Wexford. Wexford are now within minutes of a place in the All-Ireland Final. For the first time in 19 years. And that goes off the stick there of Michal Donoghue. Most of the Limerick fans have stayed on to see the opposition in the All-Ireland Final in four weeks' time. It looks like being Wexford. Galway about to bring on another sub, but Wexford have used up their full quota. Into Billy Byrne. The substitute full forward. Back to Tom Dempsey. Turning to make a better angle. And he's put it high enough. His sixth point in this match has ensured that Wexford are now on the verge of a place in the final. Galway have just brought on another fresh player, Ollie Canning, no relation, but six points the margin. This is the latest one here, as that ball was fed back by Billy Byrne to the waiting Tom Dempsey. Tom is on his way to a first ever appearance in an All-Ireland final, or so it seems. Yes, only Joe. a miracle can now stop this. Yes, only a miracle now, and uh, great play again by the substitute there, full forward. Using his old craft in his own head, when he wasn't going to score, he threw the ball out to Tom Dempsey. But it's sad to see Joe Coney going off the field. I'm sure that affected the injury he had there early on in the second half has affected him very much in this game. Ollie Canning in there. Oh, perhaps the miracle will happen yet. There's another goal for Galway. Kevin Broderick making it 2.13 to 3.7 and once again just three points in it. Galway within a goal, you know, of denying Wexford. Great play again, William Brock to bring the ball through and as the ball broke out, grown shot and into the back of the net by Kevin Broderick. So now Wexford having to live on the nerves. We're into stoppage time. And that ball has gone wide from Larry Murphy. That certainly would have been the insurance point for Wexford if that went over. It's 19 points for Wexford, 16 points for Galway. It may all come down to this last attack. Well caught there by Liam Dunn. He's challenged, however, by Peter Kelly. He's considered the free end for overholding. Free to Galway. What will they do here? Look at the anxious faces now. Liam Dunn, Cottle Moore looking for it. Michael Coleman asking the referee, I think, how much time is left. Will Cottle Moore take it? Joe Cooney's gone off. Yes, Joe, I don't think he has any other option but go for goal here. We're in stoppage time and uh, as he lines up for the ball, it looks like he's going to go for a goal. So Moore to take it, to knock it in. It's stopped by the defence. Here's a second chance. And that's gone out for a 65. Oh, anxious, anxious moments. They can barely manage to look on here. Wexford had this match by six points. But that late, late goal there has ensured there's just three between them. This was the free, came off the defender there. And the follow-up action resulted in the defender putting it out for a 65. Nigel Shocknessy is going down there to take it. It'll be in around the house. Liam Dunn has joined Damien Fitzhenry on the goal line. Nigel Shocknessy just taps it in, but he taps it in badly. And Wexford have it. A whistle has gone, I think. Yes, Wexford have won this O'Reilly semi-final as they play on at the other end. They haven't 
more than myself. But he has now, the fans certainly have. Wexford hold on to win. They win by three points. In spite of that last Galway comeback there, Wexford were not to be denied, and Martin Storey, the team captain, will lead his side in this year's All-Ireland Hurling Final, which will be between Limerick and Wexford, who won here by 2.13 to 3.7. Oh, absolute high drama there at the end, but Nigel Shockness, he never connected properly with the uh, free. No disappointing free at the end, but I'm, I, was, I suppose we can't deny Wexford there, there are at the stage. Um, I suppose most people would have loved to see Wexford in, a, in, in an All-Ireland final. No, they aren't to take to Lake Limerick. But I'm sure Galway will be very disappointed with the amount of ways they had there in the second half. Yeah, Galway more or less threw it away at one stage. Wexford are thirsting for a place in the All-Ireland final. They will bring colour. They will bring huge, huge crowds here on the first Sunday in September. Limerick will do likewise. Heaven help the county secretaries where they're going to come up with all the necessary little passes to get in here. Tickets will be at a premium. 61,000 paid in this afternoon, nearly 62 and Wexford have prevailed in exciting circumstances by just three points. Yes, Wexford into the All-Ireland Final and just as Clare did last year, not just winning their provincial title, but going on to reach the All-Ireland Final and dare we say it, could Wexford go all the way again as Gerlach Nan took his players last year. Great scenes of excitement for Wexford. While Michael Dagnan and the aforementioned Gerlach Nan have been here with me on our uh, presentation panel, and uh, Michael, well, those are fabulous scenes, obviously, for Wexford. Absolutely, and um, Wexford, Wexford today were, were super. They played a the better hurling right throughout the game. Galway had a spell in the second half where they couldn't come at them, but Wexford uh, hung on just at the end and won. But I think it's brilliant for the game of hurling. Hurling has taken on a new lease of life with live television all this summer. And with Clare last year with under Gerrard and Wexford now this year reaching the final, it's brilliant for the game to see new teams coming through. And I'm delighted for Wexford and for the supporters. Michael, let's go to Marty Morrissey because I gather someplace down in the middle he has someone to talk to. I have indeed, uh, Michael. Liam Dunn is here with me. Liam, obviously, a great day for Wexford. Oh, come on, Michael. Great, Marty. Go on, Mickey. Go on, Mickey. Go on, Mickey. I only saw one person. And that was my mother, who was in the hospital yesterday, who was in the hospital sick all week. And she couldn't make the match. And I'm just delighted because every ball I hit today, I hit for them lads out there and my mother. And I tell you one thing, it's great. A fair juice to Galway to pull it up to us, but it's great. And I'd like to say hello to Pat Noel and our former great goal man who's in the hospital at the moment. But this is a great day for Wexford. A great day. The dream really has become a reality because from, uh, from nowhere you're here. We'll put that down, put that down to our friends from Clare. They were an inspiration to us. And Peter Canavan, every word that Peter Canavan said, we've, we've, we've read about Peter Canavan, and he's a great man, and Peter Canavan and Clare, I'd like to thank as well. Well done, Liam Dunn, you can stay with us now, just stop and see a disappointing day for Paul. Yeah, we'll have to say it was disappointing, Marty, but um, I think Wexford came out today, and they really, they really came out determined today, and I think they showed that they were the better team in the day. You missed some easy frees and a lot of opportunities. Yeah, well, we got a lot of opportunities, Marty, we just didn't taste them, you know, the opportunities arise, and you have to take these opportunities that arise, if they, if they arise, that you have to take them, and unfortunately we didn't take them today. For Galway, your league champions, you will be back, no doubt. Yeah, we have a lot of talent, Marty, and there's no we'll be back. Back to you, Michael. Yes, Galway will be back, Joe, but this is Wexford's day. You know how they feel after from 12 months ago. Oh, it's an absolutely fantastic day for Wexford, and well, well deserved. And especially, I think, for Liam Griffin and his selectors, because nobody believed in Wexford this time last year. Everybody thought after the league semi-final that they were gone, that they'd never be back again. Here they are now in an All-Ireland final. Just the very same as Clare last year. It's it would be amazing if history repeated itself and they went on to win the All-Ireland. And they have a great chance of doing that. But for the moment, today's victory is absolutely fantastic for them. And Michael Dignan, interestingly enough, both Wexford and Limerick will come out of these semi-finals happy that they're through to the final and knowing they both have work to do yet. Limerick and Limerick have a lot of work to do, sharpen up for the final. Wexford will be happier. Um, they, they played well right throughout the game today, maybe missed a few chances, but their back then were well on top all through, and in reality, Galway were, were only a shadow of themselves and what people expected of them. So I think Wexford will be the happier team faced into the final, and I think they'll go on and win the All-Ireland now. OK, Michael Dragon and Gerlach, now thank you very much for your thoughts on this particular Sunday afternoon. One that has seen Wexford back in the All-Ireland final against Limerick, that to look forward to on the first Sunday in September. You can look forward to the Sunday game later on tonight here on RT Television. 9.30, we'll be reviewing both of today's matches. I hope that you'll be able to join me for that for the moment. From all of us here at Croke Park, bye-bye.